Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'll be showing you how I made this picture of Iris from Hololive and my process behind it. So the first thing I did was I created a head because I like to start with a solid head before I'd really do anything because drawing a head that isn't fully nice looking and going straight into it, it doesn't really work for me. Um, I made the mistake of not doing guidelines when I first started this artwork and that was probably a bad idea because my proportions were all over the place in the beginning. But I had a general idea of what I wanted and it was just trying to figure it out that was the tricky part. I just had to resize it, make it fit the composition a bit better, um, adjust the anatomy a bit more. I originally started with the hand behind the uh, body and it looked okay, but I think um, in the end, I just didn't really like how it felt in the composition. You'll see I tried a bunch of different hands and like pose ideas before I went to the final one. I have a really hard time coming up with um, pose ideas for hands because I'm, if I'm gonna be real, hands suck. Hands will always suck, they're so hard and I wish I understood them more than I do. I went for kind of a schoolgirl outfit, like not really one anyone would wear in real life, but just a, just a kind of more of like a, I would say maybe kinky one. I don't know if kinky is the right word. It might not be, but I'll just, uh, I'll just say that and pretend it's the correct word. I wanted a lot of flowing movement in this artwork, as you can see by the dress and kind of the way the, the, um, uh, uh, I don't know what to call that, like the sailor fringe. How I kind of wanted a lot of movement. I was really happy with the eyes I did on this artwork and I kind of hope I can replicate it the same way again. Here pretty soon I actually plan on making a hair um, tutorial and I hope, um, I hope it turns out good. I gotta find a way to structure it and that can always be tricky for me. So here pretty soon, yeah, we're going to start coloring the sketch, trying to get the full idea out. Kind of just make sure it looks correct, you know what I mean? Coloring the hair now. And here's where I did some edits to kind of try to add some tears and whatnot, but um, there, I did some quick color correction to make sure it looked nice. Now I'm gonna add the shading to kind of plan out the lighting of the artwork. Add some add glow, some color changing. Then there's a, there's a jump ahead in time because I forgot to hit record again, sorry. But uh, now we're going to the line art, and I used very thin lines for this artwork, and I think that's going to be my new go-to from this point forward, because it makes it look so clean. You can see here that I changed the head, because I really want, not head, sorry, hand. Um, it's just because I wanted something more interesting. I felt like without the hands in the picture, it just made it look kind of, I don't know, and I, I didn't want to hide the hands this time is the better way to put it and I think it looks better whenever I actually add some hands to the artwork. Line art takes a lot of time but if you do it right it really helps with guiding the shading. At least that's my personal belief. I know there are a lot of artists who avoid line art altogether and they still do just as good. Just me personally, I prefer doing line art. I actually did not the best job drawing their tears this time and I 
I wish I had done better, so my mistake. Drawing the bump in the belly is something that a lot of people um, forget to do. There's kind of a bump in the abdomen to make it look a bit more natural. Had kind of a fishnet underneath the skirt, which uh, I think is kind of cute. Somebody needs to tell me the name of that like sailor um, drape because I'm going to sit here like an idiot and not know what to call it for the longest time. So if anyone in the comments knows what this is called, I would actually love to see you tell me because I'm probably going to end up Googling it after this. But if you have it right in the comments or if I get it wrong once I finally figure out what it is, let me know because I'm kind of a moron. Dude, drawing Iris's ears is so much fun. There's something about like elf-like ears that is like really fun to draw. They're also kind of easier to draw than normal human ears. Um, just to me personally, I don't know if anyone else finds the opposite to be true, but it's just uh, my personal issues with drawing it. So if you think the line art is taking long now, imagine it this line art being done but in real time because holy crap did this line art take a very long time to make but it was worth it um i think it took like around an hour and a half to get all the lines to look the way i wanted them to the the longest part for me in any drawing is the sketching phase and the line art phase when i render i am super super quick um I don't know why I'm so quick with rendering. Maybe I'm I'm rushing it or I'm not taking enough time, but in the end, I think it looks all right. So maybe I won't uh, change how I do things, but I think in the future, I need to uh, learn to slow down on rendering. All right, now we're at the base colors. So I got the skin, the skin underneath the the uh, fishnets. Now I'm adding the clothes colors, and we are almost there, you guys. We are almost to the point where I have to stop talking to the microphone because I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I don't know what to say. Help me, please, God, help. Look at Iris. She's so cute. The embodiment of hope. If anyone's not a Hololive fan, I'm sorry I do so many Hololive artworks. It's just kind of what I'm known for. All right, now we're starting the rendering. So I, I wanted to find a reference for it, but there was no references for the, um, the skin in this position that I could find that really worked with the same body type. So I kind of had to wing it. And I think I got some of it correct, some of it not so correct, but um, I, I did my best and I think it turned out okay. I started um, laying down base colors before adding an overall multiply layer later down the line to give it a little more attack, or sorry, not attack, um, a little more bite in the lighting. I think the skin took a really long time this time, and it usually isn't like that with my artwork. Also, I just noticed I must be dehydrated or something because my god, my my voice right now is terrible. Yeah, I had fun rendering the clothes on this one too. I used a, a lot more um, hard lines and then a, a watercolor brush to kind of smoothen it out.
the horn is kind of shiny, so like getting getting shininess right is kind of difficult, but um, I think I'm doing okay. I, I know there are better artists out there who draw metal or metal-ish stuff a lot better than I do, but uh, I'll learn eventually. I'll have to buckle down and really start studying soon. I'm trying to buckle down and study hands at the moment because I'm, I'm still somewhat scared of hands and I really want to get over that fact. Added some light coming through the hair. Added a variation in color and the shines on the hair. Also, I feel like that's super important um, just to kind of add some variety and interest. Oh, the eyes. Man, I love rendering eyes. I, I, I need to start taking time on eyes again because I'm capable of so much more than I've been doing. So here we go, here's the uh, multiply layer, and then we're just light carving with the eraser. It is one of my favorite techniques, and I think everybody should try it out. It just adds an extra dimension to it. And now we're adding the post-processing. There we go, all right. And tonal curve, some more tonal curves, some kind of background-ish effects to kind of add extra movement to the composition. And there we go. We are pretty much done. If you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. It helps me out a whole lot. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.